Hello, my name is Jill, and I work with the Arizona End of Life Care Partnership, anchored at United Way of Tucson and Southern Arizona. My name is Andrew, and I also work with the Arizona End of Life Care Partnership. Thank you for joining us today for Let's Talk About It, where we will discuss with you the importance of advanced care planning. We'll be presenting information and providing tools for starting and completing the process. We'll also be talking about the importance of planning for the end of life, which is inevitable for all of us. Every person needs a plan. Could the secret to happiness rest in thinking about and talking about death? Some people think so. In Bhutanese culture, one is expected to think about death five times a day. That would be remarkable for any nation, but especially for one so closely equated with happiness as Bhutan. They know that death is a part of life. Whether we like it or not, ignoring this essential truth comes with a heavy psychological cost. Getting conscious about our own mortality will push us to live, to enjoy our time here, and to make the very most out of it. We represent the Arizona End of Life Care Partnership, which was founded with the mission to enhance the way we live by fundamentally changing the way we talk about death. We are the largest funded end of life community partnership in the nation. Our partners provide education, resources, services, and support to people of all ages in our community, helping them to navigate the challenging issues of serious illness, death, and dying. Our goal is to make talking about end of life as easy as talking about our 401ks and health insurance. We are here to help you begin, continue, or finalize your end of life care plans. Let's take a moment to watch a short video about end of life care planning. Hi, sweetheart. You are totally crushing it on Daddy Daughter Day. Yeah. Everyone out there, they love you. <laughs> and I just can't believe how fast you're growing up. Yeah. I think it's time we had a serious conversation. Do you have an end of life care plan? No. Look, I get it. Talking about death, first thing in the morning, in the office, on your first day of work, it might feel a little weird, but why? We should know. I mean, I feel like we should normalize these conversations. Yeah. I mean, like what you and I are doing right now. Think about it. What's going on in the world? There's people that are hungry out there. I'm going bald. Yeah. We just went through a pandemic. You're a pandemic baby. Did you know that? Yeah. And now we have to think about things like healthcare proxy. This is silly. Are you gonna be my healthcare proxy? No. Well, you don't have to answer now. I don't know. Take some time to think about it at least. Look, I get it. It's a huge responsibility. And well, look, the most important thing is, is we need to think about how are we gonna send me off? Mm. Now, I'm not saying that I have to be shot out of a cannon. But that would be cool. Or how about a Viking funeral? I'm talking like flaming bow and arrow, boom to the ship and blah. Or how about a dance party? Yeah. Like, yeah, you got it. You know, I mean, we can workshop it and all that. I want to go outside now. What do you say we cut out for early lunch? Let's get lunch. Yeah, let's go. What is advanced care planning? Advanced care planning is an ongoing process in which people explore, discuss, and document their goals, values, and experiences related to serious illness and end of life in order to guide future treatment considerations and choices. This process can happen at any time, regardless of a person's age or state of health. In fact, the earlier, the better. While getting your financial affairs in order and ensuring that your representatives know where those documents are located is very important, our presentation will not delve into financial planning. We will be talking about preferred end-of-life health care and non-medical care. Who needs to complete their advanced care plans? You. Advanced care planning is for everyone over 18 years old. 
but the conversation starts before that. It's for everyone beginning at an early age. In 2019, the End of Life Care Partnership conducted a survey about attitudes around end of life in Pima County. 75% of people interviewed felt that talking about death was important, but 68% had not yet written down their wishes. Are you among the 68% who have not yet written down their wishes? We are not here to shame you. We are here to help you complete your advanced directives. How do I start? Step one, identify your trusted people. Your trusted person or people will speak for you only if you are unable to speak for yourself regarding decisions about your care at the end of life. This person called your healthcare proxy, surrogate decision maker, advocate, representative, agent, or health care power of attorney will follow your wishes and be your spokesperson if you become seriously ill and need someone to make decisions on your behalf. Who comprises your personal committee of trusted people? You can choose more than one. These can be family members, friends, clergy, anyone whom you trust to follow your wishes. The identified representative will only speak for you if you cannot, if you are medically incapacitated. They do not take control as soon as you sign the form. How do you go about it? Why is this important? Without advanced directives, Arizona law and medical ethics require healthcare providers to do everything they can to save a patient by default. Maybe this is what you want. Maybe it's not what you want. You have the right to have a say about your care. Without designating someone to speak on your behalf, healthcare professionals will go to these people in this order. Your spouse, unless you and your spouse are legally separated. Your adult child. If there is more than one adult child, the healthcare providers will seek the, con the consent of a majority of the children who are available for consultation. Your parent, your domestic partner, your brother or sister, your close friend. Think about who you want to speak for you and who you do not want to speak for you. After choosing your healthcare proxy, the next step is to begin thinking about what's important to you in your life. What matters most to you in living your life every day? This will help clarify what will be important at the end of life. Step three in the process is talk about it. Talking about end of life can be awkward, but it doesn't have to be. The more we talk about it, the easier it will become. Tell your healthcare proxy what your end of life preferences are. Sometimes it's the elephant in the room that you just want to ignore as long as possible. But what if talking about end of life actually enhances your life right now? While starting these conversations can be challenging, there are tools to help you along the way. The Conversation Project is a free resource to help guide you through the process of starting conversations with those who matter most to you about your wishes and their wishes for health care through the end of life. Five Wishes, an advanced directive, is unique among other living wills and healthcare agent forms because it speaks to most all of a person's needs, medical, personal, emotional, and spiritual, and helps to guide and structure discussions with family and healthcare providers, making conversations easier. You can learn more about these resources and others on our website at azendoflifecare.org. Now we arrive at step four. Write it down and make it official. Our partnership recommends five wishes as a useful tool and guide for advanced care planning. Five wishes is a living will document that helps you think about, decide, and write down what you want at the end of life. Let's take a moment to walk through the five wishes. The first wish, the person I want to make care decisions for me when I can't. This wish is all about picking who your healthcare proxy is. The second wish, the kind of medical treatment I want or don't want. This wish is about receiving life extending care, palliative care, hospice, experimental treatments and trials, and other medical care. The third wish, how comfortable I want to be. This wish covers specifics regarding your personal care. The fourth wish is how I want people to treat me. This wish covers your family, 
culture, and religious traditions. The fifth wish, what I want my loved ones to know. This wish is all about funeral plans, body disposition, and the legacy you want to leave. Our partnership provides free workshops to complete a sixth wish, which is to honor the gender identification and preferred name of the individual after death. To learn more about these free workshops, visit our website, azendoflifecare.org. Five Wishes is an advanced directive, and it includes these forms. Healthcare power of attorney identifies another person to make healthcare decisions if you can no longer make those decisions for yourself, and a living will, which is a written statement that expresses your wishes about medical and non-medical care during serious illness or end of life. Additional advanced care planning forms include a DNR, or do not resuscitate. This is a form that you complete with your doctor that informs emergency personnel that you do not want cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, to be started if you stop breathing. Mental health care power of attorney, which identifies another person to make mental health care decisions if you can no longer make those decisions for yourself. Anyone who has ever planned a trip, a wedding, a birth, a party, a presentation, knows that rarely does all the pre-planning result in everything happening just as planned. End of life and dying are guaranteed, but the details are completely unknown. It's so important to communicate our wishes so that if possible, our final days will match our priorities and values that we held so dearly while living. We are trying to create a community that has end of life preferences documented so that care is consistent with these preferences. The next step in the process, step five, is save your documents. Make sure that you give copies to your identified healthcare proxy or proxies and your healthcare providers. Also, make sure to store your documents in a safe place and upload them into the cloud-based registry that our partner, Health Current, has launched in Arizona. This statewide Arizona Healthcare Directives Registry can be accessed in real time by providers and first responders. Go to their website, azhdr.org, for information and to learn how to upload your completed and signed documents. The final step is to review and revise your documents. It is recommended that you review your documents at these critical moments in your life. It's not like open enrollment. You can do this at any time. However, these are the recommended times. After receiving a new medical diagnosis, if you experience a decline in your health status due to age or illness, after the death of a close friend or loved one, especially if they had been named as your agent or advocate in your document, during a divorce or a change in relationship status, every decade, decade or with a move or geographical change creating distance between you and your appointed healthcare advocate. If you move out of state, make sure your documents are rec recognized in that state. Let's review the six steps to advanced care planning. Number one, choose your person. Number two, take some time to think about what matters. Number three, talk about your preferences. Have a say in your care. Number four, write down your wishes. Number five, store your documents and give copies to your trusted people and your medical providers. And step six, review often and revise when needed. The Arizona End of Life Care Partnership website has resources to help you start the conversation, determine which documents are most meaningful for you, learn ideas on how to choose your person, your personal representative, and considerations for making decisions about your medical care and for after you die. No matter how old you are or your state of health, advanced care planning is for all of us. Thinking about death enhances the way we live by focusing on our values, preferences, and priorities. Thank you so much for joining us today and we hope that you are inspired to begin your advanced care plan.